parasympathetic nerves. So again, the parasympathetic is what allows you to rest and digest and heal and repair. And the sympathetic is what allows you to run or, and flee. And that gets your adrenaline going. So there's also other nerves that go to the arms and legs and all the muscles. But this one is a picture of what we call the autonomic nervous system. That means that all of these nerves are functioning automatically. So the meridians are part of a system that brings energy into the organs. They run up and down your body and they have uh, one main function and that is to provide energy for your internal organs. So all the cells in our body have to have energy to function and they're able to store that energy within themselves. But if they ever need more energy, then what do they do? So in the, in the, turn, in the case of your muscles, Let's say you've overexerted your muscles and now they're weak and sore and you can barely walk. So what you, can, what you do is you just sit down and you still survive. You rest those muscles a few days and then you, they are able to recuperate and you can have more energy again. But when it comes to your internal organs, they can't just stop and rest. They're, they're, they're called vital organs. Vital organs mean, means that they have to function for you to stay alive. But what happens when your vital organs run out of energy is they have to have a, a way to tap into more energy. And what ha in this case, the, the muscles start functioning like reserve batteries. And through the um, pathways of the meridians, the organs are able to get more energy from the muscles and continue their function. So how does the spine and the meridian uh, interact? So let's say you have tightness in your neck and shoulders. And the uppermost segment in your back, it's called T1. It's the first thoracic segment. And T1 also sends nerve information to the heart. So if we check the meridian to the heart, it, it'll become active and it'll have more tender points along that pathway. So if somebody uh, presents with pain in their neck and their shoulders and we palpate the T1 segment, it may feel stiff and it may be tender to the touch. And if we find these things, then we can check for the meridian to the heart. And when we check that meridian, if we find tenderness in there, then we know that they are both going to be associated with the same syndrome. Now, if we also include the mental emotional component, then we're going to think about how the person's uh, heart can be affected emotionally. And if you think of when people say somebody has a broken heart, then we can think that maybe, uh, that the emotion of the heart has to do with sadness and with joy. So if the energy is depleted, then that person is more likely to feel sad. So if we provide treatment either directly to the T1 segment or to the meridian, all of those will, will benefit. Person, uh, person's neck uh, tightness and stiffness will decrease. Uh, they may have less sadness. And the meridian will also be less tender. So treating the spinal segment or treating the meridian will help either situation. And strengthening the muscles along the meridian or stretching those muscles along the meridian will help uh, th that meridian but al also as well as that strengthening or stretching the muscles along the spinal level so 